good session. Thank you, you too. I am Elijah. Welcome, thank you. You're all being recorded. How are you? I am fine. And how are you? I'm I recognize you, I believe. You must be Max. <laughs> I'm tired, but I'm good. Happy to get speak to you. Thank you. Um, what's your mission with Jim? My if mission is to speak the word of God that the people of the earth need to hear. Because there is a disconnect from all the thoughts that they have about how to reach me and how they are going about it. It is much simpler than they think. It is, they do not have to listen to all the rhetoric from these churches to understand who I am. I am not all those things that they say. I am many things, but they put attach many things to me that are not of me violence and murder and wrath and things of this nature. So these are not part of who I am. So is it an error in, in writing? What did you say? Was it an error in, uh, in the Bible that you are connected? There are to many errors and this is to clear them up. I am to bring God's words to the people. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, What happens to the previous higher self of Jim? Uh, how does the replacement of one higher self with another, the, how does it happen? Sometimes it is necessary for the, the missions to be brought forward that need to happen. Some of the past higher selves that were here were preparing for this time. And now that it is prepared, I come in and I will take over from those that have done the preparation. Um, how are you related to the previous higher self? Is there like spiritual link? There is. Wonderful. I am, a, I am an aspect, as they call it, of Yeshua, of Jesus, of God. Mm. And Jesus was Jim's higher self? His previous higher self is still here. We are working together at this time, but he will eventually leave. Ah, was it Jesus? No, it was Malachi, the one who is brought the four. He is the one that in the Old Testament foretold of the coming of Christ as well, foretold of the things of the future, and is aware of many of the things that are to happen. But he was the preparer of the way, and not the speaker. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Nice. So, um, I was Sri Yukteswar uh, your incarnation? That is for you and everyone else to decide. I am not going to put that out there as a fact because many will disregard me then. I must come through as Elijah. I must come through as the person that is here. And this is the personality that is to be forthcoming. So therefore, even though it may be aspects of others or of the past, this is the present. I see. Makes sense. Thank you.
what is how is your message different from other messages what is your specialty i did not hear the question how is your message different from messages from others what is your specialty first of all many of your peoples not the jewish peoples however believe that there is a necessity for an intercessor to get to heaven to to come to the oversoul but that is not true jesus was there to be an intercessor of course because there was a time when the people could not believe that they could speak to god they could not believe that he could have a direct connection so someone had to come and show them that there could be a link to god that they were not lost that they had to that they could get to god through someone else yes that time has passed right thank you so that's your main difference from other messages yes that is one of the things also that all these different things that they that the church brings to them making them pay money and do uh, be different than who they really are try to fit them into a mold of what they believe a christian or a holy person is is too difficult for humanity they must understand that they must be themselves they must rise up and grow in the their own personalities so that god may take over who they are now that does not mean being or giving up things of the third dimension that means speaking to god finding out what god wants and how he can integrate in them in a greater way that is not a a folly is not something that is beyond what they can do thank you um i started looking at prayers and affirmations and uh formalizing them yes uh some many of the good prayers are written in uh ancient archaic russian and english and many of the prayers are good they are great guidelines for how people should pray to get all the things that they need and have all their sins forgiven however they they believe that they should repeat these prayers over and over again whereas they are just a guideline for something more personal something that they should create on their own they should be able to use this as a guideline to pray to god from their hearts are you still um, valuing operating with the concept concept of sin sin is mm-hmm. something that is a belief oriented thing it has been taught that many things are sins that are not sins and the the greatest sin of all is not to love your neighbor and they find that they're placing their interests or their information in sins by judging others and not looking inward to find their own sins they're looking and making themselves feel better by pushing out a judgment instead of loving everyone as they should and that is true that love covers a multitude of sin but it is that humanity is not loving each other they are judging each other and accusing each other of sins and some of which are not even sins but they are things that differ from themselves and so when it differs from themselves they can suddenly feel more comfortable calling it a sin uh-huh um the whole idea of sin 
in many cultures is that it is judged by some higher, higher intelligences, by angels, God, and uh, other Let me tell you about God. When he looks at humans, he sees their soul. He sees the light that they are shedding onto the world. He does not look for sins. He looks for their love, for their light, their wisdom, and their purity. He does not look at their sins. That would be like trying to look at every facet of them all at once. So he looks at the brightness, the light that is coming from them, and that's how he judges. Hmm. Say, I Do think not put your thought processes on judgment of sin, because there are too many, and everyone has them. But put your thought process in becoming one who gives love and light to others, one who loves God and brings in his love, and also brings it out to the world, along with the wisdom that is his. Hmm. Say, I take uh, an example of very you energetic... See, negative. too many people are focused on these things called sins, and they are living a life of freedom, of love. So therefore, they must... What was... Are you there? Are you there? I'm back. So, Did you hear anything that I said? Uh, I lost about two minutes of your conversation. So you were speaking about how people look at sins. They live in fear. They live in the f fear that they are going to do something wrong. Or they live in the fear that others are going to do something wrong and lose eternity. These things are not true. What they should look at is love. You should not live in a fear-based society where everything is looked at as being wrong. But yet, you should look to God and see what right you are doing, what light you are shedding. God judges you on the light, the love, the beauty that you give. He does not judge you on all the little things that you may or may not be doing wrong. But he does look at you and find what love you are sharing with the world, what wisdom and information that is making others feel and move in a positive direction. If you are a fear-based person, you live... Okay. Are if you there? Are, if you are a fear-based person, you leave. You said, you, the last thing I heard was, if you are a fear-based person, you leave. You live fearing that someone will hurt you, or you will do something wrong, and God will be unhappy. This is not the way to live.
the delusion of the dark side. You must rise up and not be afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To live in fear is to live in limitation. To live without fear is to live unlimited life and love. God wants you to have your own personality, to be able to move out into the world fearlessly, to be yourself, to teach others and show others what love, light, and understanding is, what wisdom and power of goodness can do, not to be afraid to move or be paralyzed by fear. This is one of the messages that must come to this planet. Thank you. I will stop the, the recording for the public at the moment uh, because there are certain interruptions. I don't want to stress that connection. I want to keep it uh, less stressed. Understood. So, so I, still, I want to ask a few personal questions. Yes. So that, like, from this point on, it will not be published. Um, have I been with you in your Elijah life? Yes. What was my um, name? Am I recorded? Is my name recorded? Your name is not recorded at that time, but you were with me. And you were someone of importance. But not all the important names were recorded at that time. Can you give me my name? One moment, please. I will see if that is a part of what I am supposed to do. Okay. Your name was Tertian at that time. How was it related to you? You were one of the government officials. <laughs> And what did you do? You were. And I was the prophet. Just a prophet. I was just the prophet. <laughs> but you see, they put godlike thoughts on me because of the different things that were happening at that time. You realize that God was not a violent person, but there was much violence at that time, and it was coming down from the sky, and they gave credit to God for this violence whereas there was an alien war going on in your planet, much of the Old Testament. Which and is? some of the aliens were on your planet, and they were fighting one another. And it was considered that God was causing a lot of destruction because it was coming from the sky. But it was not necessarily God that was causing destruction. And so many things were accredited to God that were not actually his actions.